My word, this is tight. Come on! <laughs> oh, we've left her. <laughs> is this. The Ford Bronco is so awesome. It is hands down the best rugged SUV of the moment. No, it isn't because this is. This is a Jeep Wrangler and for the last 36 years, it's been the iconic American off-roader. But as you can probably hear, this is no ordinary Wrangler. This one has a 6.4 litre V8 engine from a Dodge Challenger. It's got 470 horsepower, and I think it does everything that Nicola's Bronco does, but just with a bit more flair, a bit more excitement. As you can probably tell, I have really fallen for this thing. But let's pull over and have a chat with Nicola. She is gonna love it. That is an old car, let's be honest. This is brand spanking new. This is more exciting. How often have you ever seen these on a British road? You haven't until today. Thank you. Okay, this is the first time I've seen one of those, but is this the first time you've seen a V8-powered Jeep Wrangler? Stop banging on about the V8, okay? <laughs> the when V8 everyone... makes it. Well, that's nice, but this has a pretty decent engine. We've got four cylinders under here. It's a 2.3 litre. It does 300 brake horsepower. You know, it's lovely. Eight cylinders. 470 horsepower and it looks great and it's a proper off-roader you've got live axles front and rear you've got a ladder chassis that's got a ladder chassis too so it's not quite as new underneath as hang, you'd expect hang on a second right so okay your biggest argument is how good it is off-road mm -hmm. but in terms of day-to-day -day driving how was that for you on the m25 um a little bit vague a little bit woolly yeah just sort of swishing around in the lane like that, but it sounded great while doing it. What did that sound like on the motorway? It, it, it sounded noisy, mostly because of the roof, mm. but that's fine. It was lovely. It was, it was an absolute pleasure to drive. And I think what we need to do is fully challenge these cars, fully put them head to head. So, two of the hottest American SUVs of the moment going head to head. But straight off the bat, it's worth saying that if you want to buy a Bronco or a Wrangler 392 in the UK, it won't be through official dealer networks. You'll need to import one through Clive Sutton, and that brings us onto another point. Yusuf keeps bragging on about the Wrangler's crazy power figures, but he knows just as well as I do that Ford has released a V6 powered Bronco Raptor with around 400 brake horsepower and that is a much closer match for his v8 wrangler trouble is we couldn't get hold of one of those in the uk but i'm pretty sure that the bronco's inherent advantages over the jeep will still be evident in this test and it could prove to be the better all-round suv speaking of which what's it actually like okay welcome on board the bronco um this is uh slightly louder on the interior than I would have liked. It's mostly because of the roof, because it's one big long canvas roof. So when you're driving on like the M25 or you really put your foot down, the noise doesn't come from the engine, the noise comes from the roof. So we have under this bonnet a 2.3 litre four pot straight line, four cylinders, lovely, lovely. Yes, I know that Yusuf has double what I have. This has 296 brake horsepower. It's got 441 Newton meters of torque. There is a nice little shove there though. It's not too bad. It is a very enjoyable drive. I'm very much having a great time today. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, that Bronco is such a cool bit of kit. But if you're going to buy a beefy American off-roader, you've got to go all out, haven't you? Let's get to know the Wrangler. <laughs> right, I'm going to calm it down. Obviously, the standard Wrangler is a special machine, but this thing with the Hemi V8, 6.4 litres, it blows your head off. 0 to 60, four and a half seconds in a car like this that's designed to go off-road. Live axles, it's got a ladder frame chassis. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. And that noise does not get old. 
Okay, the quality is not up to German car standards, but it's nice enough in here. It feels plush. You've got a retractable fabric roof as well. But of course, this is a Wrangler. So from the mechanical makeup of this car, it's quite obvious it's not all rosy on the road because we've got a steering box actually, a recirculating ball steering system. And it's fine for going around town. The steering's light and the car's surprisingly easy to place for such a big beast like this. But the problem comes when you get up to speed, about 70 or 80 miles an hour, you just have to correct the car because it just feels like it's floating between the lanes. It's not absolutely pinned. Clearly, the Wrangler 392 has its flaws on the road. But as a car to make you giggle, it is right up there. The thing is, I've got a feeling that the Bronco might pull ahead in areas that matter more in the real world. So for the first challenge, I need to make use of the Wrangler's strengths, namely its ridiculous noise and speed. Completely irrelevant, but let's have a drag race. Nicola, are you up for a bit of a rev battle? I told you. Yes, I knew you would do this to me. This is what a real engine sounds like. Mate, I can't deny that sounds pretty damn sexy. <laughs> okay, shall we uh, prep for the drag race? Yes, I am now preparing and getting ready for the drag race. We have Greg, our cameraman, standing in front of us, who is about to give us the signal ready to go. I'm, I'm really excited, but I'm really going to lose this so badly. OK, right, I'm ready when you are. You never know, Nick. I've got big off-road tyres. I might start slipping around, might end up in the field somewhere, but we'll see. Gives you a chance. <laughs> it wasn't really a fair fight. <laughs> you can get a more powerful Bronco, but still doesn't have the firepower of this one. What happened? <laughs> Nothing happened. You just, you know, you just were a show off. We've got some other tests coming up and you might fare a bit better in that Bronco. I know I will. This isn't all about speed, just so you know. She's right. I'll be honest, I've kind of fallen in love with this car since I've had it. Do you know what, Nicola, I've been teasing you, but I really do like the Bronco. In my mirrors now, it looks the business. It looks modern. I think that is a triumph of modern retro design because people wouldn't really know that it's retro unless they knew about the original Bronco, but it still looks fresh at the same time. And just to be polite, yes, the Wrangler is and always has been a very, very lovely looking motor. Like it always turns my head, always. Yeah, this one's a bit beefy, isn't it? So I think we're two inches higher than the standard Wrangler. We've got off-road tires and obviously this gold detailing, which uh, yeah helps it stand out a bit. Exactly that. What I do like about this is the terrain management because there's a selector down here, right? Which is called the goat modes, like G-O-A-T. Not greatest of all time, no, but called go on any terrain modes, which basically allows you to do anything with this car. So are you suggesting that we veer off and go on the grass a bit? Let's go on the grass. I'm not saying we can go fully off road because um, we don't, we're not allowed to damage the cars too much, but let's take it onto the grass, yeah. We're confident that both of these cars would be pretty much unstoppable on a proper off-road course, even though the Jeep probably has the edge with its raised ride height, knobbly tyres and fox dampers. It looks like Yusuf is having a bit too much fun though, and I want to sample some of that V8 goodness. Is it time to swap? Can we swap now? Let's swap. I quite like it in here. It feels rugged, like that Wrangler is a bit more plush. You've got leather surfaces and all that kind of stuff, but you've got grab handles, you've got hard plastics and it feels rugged. It doesn't feel cheap, it feels rugged. 
and that sounds great. That sounds awesome from back here. Okay, well, um, I'll see you in a minute. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay, okay, okay. Wowie. Okay, I'll see what he means now. That's quite weird, actually. To sort of go in a straight line, I feel like I'm having to move the steering wheel quite a lot. Whereas the Bronco is, I guess the Bronco is just more designed for normal roads as well as off-road. So you don't really have to do much with the stick, but that felt like I was really like this, just to keep going in a straight line. That was nice though. <laughs> right, I'm gonna give this the bean. So we've got, what was it, a 2.3 liter EcoBoost. horsepower turbocharged torque it actually feels pretty fruity it's not as savage as the Wrangler but that's enough performance for a family SUV for an off-roader like this the Wrangler's just silly the Wrangler's insane the engine defines that car but this in isolation is more than adequate I think I quite like it and straight away it feels a lot more precise. You've got a modern front end on this car, so it's double wishbones on both corners at the front. You've got rack and pinion steering. It feels much easier to guide around than the Wrangler. It makes it feel a bit archaic, to be honest. So each car has its merits, but let's face it, most people will buy these things to cruise around and show off in cities. So I thought it'd be a nice idea to test the city car credentials of these massive American SUVs in central London at rush hour. Right, there's Nicola and we're in traffic in central London in two of the largest cars you could possibly test here at Auto Express. I'm sure Nicola's saying the same thing. Yes, she is. Angry finger pointing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can guarantee you, right now, Yusuf is in that Wrangler, banging on about the V8, and then being like, oh, but this car isn't designed for city driving. This is a serious off-roader. I mean, this is not what this car is built for. This is a serious off-roader from America with a massive V8 in the nose. It is not a city car. This is uh, where we have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> All right, how are you getting on in the Bronco? I was just saying, if there is a time for you to find out what a good driver you are, it's while you're driving something the size of a tank through central London left-hand drive. <laughs> I completely agree. I mean, power sliding at 100 miles an hour is probably a doddle compared to this. I am struggling with this Wrangler, but it is getting a few looks. Well, are people accidentally looking at yours because they've spent most of the time looking at me and they're like, oh, what's that behind it? Oh, it's just a Wrangler. Don't worry about it. This is where the Bronco wins. The amount of people just staring and loving this car and being like oh my god what is that i'm like it's bronco babes <laughs> there's another one see staring yeah yeah sure this thing attracts attention but not always the right kind of attention <laughs> Well, Yusuf, what did you expect, having dragged us into central London in two mahoosive American off-roaders? Oh, I don't understand that man sometimes. But there is method to my madness, because this is actually how these cars are going to be used. So it's worth just trying it out, because let's face it, they're serious off-road cars, but they're posing the wheels. Especially this car. I mean, this is really turning heads. But I have to say, the ride is actually pretty good around town. Like, even though this car has live axles front and rear, it does bob around a little bit, but the dampers really do round off the worst of the jolts. And it's quite relaxing. You've got really quite nice and light steering, and you don't suffer at low speeds from that sort of vagueness you get with the steering box. Giant speed bump. 
non-event. This thing is actually <laughs> absurd. <laughs> I've done it! That was tight, that, that was tight. I did it though. My word, this is tight. I actually have a newfound respect for the people that cruise around London in cars like this to pose because it ain't easy. <laughs> Rev it. Go on. Nicola, there are literally hundreds of people around. You want to get attention? Do it. Oh, God. <laughs> The amount of people look at him like, oh, idiot. Okay, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> I'm out of here.